Hello everyone and welcome to tonight's live stream. We are live after a few technical hiccups. I don't know what the hell that was all about, but hopefully uh, everyone is now filtering into this room and everything is going to be okay from here on out. Uh, we are live and we are doing a live class on how to do level design for caves and other underground systems. So tunnels, caves, anything underground is all up for grabs. And what's quite interesting about today is we're going to show you some novel ways of how to create caves that you may not have thought of doing before. So we're going to try and go through that and answer questions what we can about caves uh, and everything underground uh, as best we can. So uh, we're just waiting for people to filter in and we'll get started. Um, Look at that light, it's very bright in my forehead, isn't it? Look at how white that forehead is. Let's see if we can sort that out. Try and bring that down there. Hello, John Harris from Seattle. There we go, that's looking good. Okay. Um, I can close that now. We can go to Unreal. So hi Rusty, hi Jason, hello, hi Gorky, Gorkowski, hello it's me. Uh, do you plan to cover camera management in caves? Um, if we have time to, we can do, yeah. So there's a, there's a few things I definitely want to cover, and then after that we'll take some questions and requests about underground stuff, um, for sure. Yeah, cool. Okay. Let's jump in. So, um, as per usual, if you have any questions about what we're doing here, or I don't explain a step or anything like that, uh, feel free to pull me up on it in the chat, um, and we'll answer it as best we can. Um, have I ever been caving? No, I haven't. Dug a hole at the beach. That's about it. Um, okay, so... The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to build caves. And then I'm going to show you how to integrate caves with a landscape. Um, and then we'll show you some other little bits and bobs as well. Okay. So, um, first of all, let's make a landscape uh, that we can use. Uh, landscape. Sure. Done. And I'm just going to get rid of all these cubes and things. Oh, part of me. Get rid of these walls and simulation cubes as well. Yeah. Chamfer cubes, you can go away as well. And we'll give it a text render, but I don't want you either. Okay. I think we're good to go. Perfect. Right, so. Um, hi, Childen. Yes, uh, we are doing well, thank you. Um, okay, so to get started, the first thing you need to understand and be aware of at all times is that landscapes can't do caves. Okay, landscapes can either go up or down. They can't go over or under. They are convex only, so they can go up and down. Okay, they're just height maps. So if you're thinking of how can I make a, a landscape curl around or dig a hole through a landscape, you can't do it. Um, now, you can use like voxel plugins to handle that, but we're not worried about voxel. We're not doing that. We're doing uh, the old fashioned cave system that you'd see in like a the, or in any, any type of game. Okay, it'd be a Skyrim dungeon or um, any, I don't know, whatever cave system you may want to think of. So. As I said, we're going to show you how to build a cave and then we'll show you how to integrate it with your landscape. Um, we'll show you some texturing things as well, some unique things you can do with that. But let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to go to modeling mode. And when you're in modeling mode, you're going to find your way down to the cube grid option. Okay, you're going to click on that. And we're going to choose the size of our grid we want to use. So at the moment, the current block size is set to 100. We'll make it a bit bigger. We'll do something like, a, let's do 1,000. Okay. So nice and big. Uh, maybe a bit too big. 500. Uh, there we go. That seems a bit more like it. Okay. 
So we're going to click somewhere on our grid and just click it and away we go. So the way this system works is you can pull or push a block out. So if you pull it, it's going to come out of whatever side you've got selected. Okay. So we're going to design a simple layout for a cave. So I'm going to select this side and then I'm going to pull, 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 pull out like that. And I can now pull from over here. Do, 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 do. I can now pull from over here. Yeah, we can do anything we want in regards to this. Now, typically, I'm not going to worry about the vertical, but we can do if you want. Uh, let's say we want to make this a loop. We can pull it out, and it will close the gap for us. Uh, we'll give some put in other dead ends and things. Some sort of mine shafts, things like that. Okay, so there is our cave network. So once we've done that, we hit accept and we're done there. And we're then going to in, uh, turn it inside out. So you're going to go down to attributes down the bottom and you go to normals and you're going to tick on invert normals. And now you can see it's in turned all the materials inside out. Okay. Next, we are going to uh, first of all, accept that. Uh, then we are then going to select and and delete the whole if we're cave. So we're going to go to uh, model, polygroup edit, and I'll set the end here and delete. And any other holes you want to have in your cave that lead to the outside world, you just delete those holes as well. So as you can see here, we've got an exit. Okay, so right now, this is a perfectly fine cave system. It's just square, that's all. Obviously, not that good looking. Um, so let's make it better looking. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all subdivide it. So I'm going to click on subdivide. And by default, it's going to set to three, which is way too smooth in my opinion. So I'm going to knock this way down to one. We get this more interesting sort of pattern. And then I'm going to click accept. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. We've got something a bit more, a bit more interesting. Okay, so now what I can do is I can push and pull this thing apart to really deform it and manipulate it in any sort of cool, interesting ways. If I go to Polygroup uh, Edit, I can go in here. And let's say I can make this entrance bit a bit wider. So I'm going to click on here and here. And I can pull the Scale tool to scale it open and improve the mouth of the cave a little bit. And I'm going to just pull this out. I can move it. You can do it with the edges as well, uh, the edge loops if you want. Uh, you can do vertices, you know, whatever it is you want to do. So we're going to make this bit wider. So if you want to make it what things wider, you just select both wall edges and you scale them out. And it'll stretch them out like this. Now, bear in mind, you will get some overlapping bits, but we'll fix those as we go. But we can slowly out and build out our thing. We can also rotate it and add some more deformity to it and make it more interesting little shapes and set this bit and I can scale this all out like that yeah set those gonna move that out Ooh. move that out oh I've gone I've gone beyond the realms of my Entrance, hold on. There we go. Pull that out. So you can keep the form in your cave like this manually if you like, but there are other ways you can do. So what we can do now is we, if we wanted to, we can accept that. Okay, here's our cave system so far. And if you want to speed things up a little bit, you can go down to uh, deform and go to vertex sculpt. So Vertex Sculpt is going to move the vertices about as you sculpt them. So it's not going to add any extra details, it's going to move about the ones we've got. Now, if you just click on it, it's going to pull it in and, and crush it, which you don't want. So what you want to do is you want to, first of all, turn the, the, uh, the strength down a little bit. So I'm going to turn the strength down to like 0.1-ish. And then you're going to hold down uh, Shift, oh, no, sorry, Control. And Control is going to like balloon it out. We can decrease the size a little bit too. 
And if I'm holding down control, it's going to push it out. The reason we have to hold down control is because we've got it inverted. So it's a little bit weird, like, way of sculpting. We basically it in from the inside out. Ah, one way. There you go. And we just keep basically doing this. So if it goes red, that means there's um two meshes sort of like overlapping each other and like cl and clipping each other, which is obviously not good. We can again fix that uh in a manual. That's not our big concern at the moment. Our concern at the moment is just getting the right shape and size that we want. And like okay, let's make one big area like a room. Um let's do this bit like a room. So I'm going to push this out a bit more. Do a higher ceiling. And if you do want to go the route of adding more detail, so let's say we're making, we are making this room bigger. Okay. Let's go ahead and make it uh, more detailed. So if you go to, well, first of all, we'll accept that. Then go to dynamic sculpt. What you do with this is it's going to then add more vertices in as you are um, pushing things around. So I'm gonna just change that down strength down again. I just take it down so I have a bit more control over it. So this is a move, okay? So this is grab bits and I can move and bits about, but you can see as it's adding more vertices to it. Now it's not a big deal because we can tidy up and simplify this later if we want. Um, but you also got other tools here. We've got different types. We've got smooth, sculpting, inflate, pinching, flatten, all these sort of things that can help us with this. So I'm gonna to go to sculpt here. Um this is done and this is through normal. What it means it's gonna be based upon the normal of the polygon. So as I push this out, it's going to normal uh, normalize around there. Let's just change the size of that bit. Uh there we go. But if we go sculpt max it should push out a bit more. Uh, come on. I can see him getting a lot more detail. You can always go back to the vertex sculpt as well with these extra vertices this is added. So those bits that are clipping and overlapping, the, the dynamic sculpt's gonna help fix that. So it's worth just putting it on those corners there just to help you line these up a bit better. Okay, now let's go to uh, move again. And just move the room about. And because you're using the modeling tools, what you're basically doing is also you're adding more collision data to it. So when you, if you don't know what happens when you do modeling tools, the collisions turn to complex collision, which uh, basically means that every vertice is going to have its own colli uh, collider, uh, which is fine so long as you don't go too high detailed. Okay, you don't want to go too nad with it. So we typically will clean this up in a moment. Uh, so it doesn't have as many vertices doing like things, um, but yeah, you just you generally want to uh, keep it low. Poly. Oh, me. Let's inflate that. Uh, inflate. And change the size out a little bit. Oh, one wait. No. no. Ah, why are you doing it? Uh, should be. No, no, no. Stop, stop, stop. Uh, it should. No, why is it doing that? Okay, let's go back to the um 
vertex sculpt because that we should do, definitely do it. Uh, inflate. Yeah, there you go. Strength's a bit too high. That's why I've seen some weirdness. What value do you have on your boolean? I don't have any booleans. This is just modeling mode. Okay, let's try and clean that up. So I'm going to go to um, flatten. Okay, so I'm going to change this here to flatten. And we'll go along the floor and add a, a flatten the floor out a little bit. So we'll turn the strength down and maybe change the size down a bit more as well. And I'm going to flatten areas of the cave out. Not all of it, because obviously caves don't, don't have flat floors. But you want to be able to walk along what you're doing. Um, what's going on here? Yes, um, where's the dynamic sculpt thing? Hang on. Whoop. Beautiful. Dynamic sculpt. Let's just sort that out. There we go. There we go. There we go. Give it that bit more detail to do stuff. Okay. Uh, right, let's go back to the vertex sculpt. What value do you have on your boolean? I say we're not using booleans. This is not a boolean. This is a, cu a cube that's turned inside out. Well, it started off as a cube. So I'm just going to... I say I'm just, I'm just tapping it along the floor so the player's got some, like, level ground um, sort of elements. Oop, maybe a bit too much. Uh, let's go back to dynamic sculpt and clean these corners up a little bit. Okay. Da, 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 da. Nice. Okay. Um, I think we're quite good with this. Okay, so let's just test this out by running through it with our player character. Now I may need to lower this a bit. So I can test it out properly. But as I said, because it's got complex collision on, it means that the whole inside um uh, value that we can uh, we can see inside the cave and, and walk around it, no problem. Uh, isn't that the one where you can set the floating point number? Well, Boolean isn't a set of floating point number. Are you talking about the strength of the brush? Is that what you're talking about? Because that's different. This is not a ZBrush. <laughs> this is all in Unreal. Yeah. Uh, is that a Bowser sculpture in the background? It's a Bowser Lego uh, sculpture, yeah. Okay, so it's looking not too bad. We've got a nice cave sort of structure. Not looking too bad. Now, one thing you're going to want to do when you have finished your cave, as I said, you probably want to simplify it first of all. So select the uh, the uh, the cave, and you're going to go to Mesh, and then Simplify. Now, what it's going to do is going to take all those nasty little polygons that don't actually do anything and just going to tidy them up a little bit. And so let's knock it down by 50%, this is. Obviously, the lower you go down, um, the, the more deformed it's going to be. Um, so 50 should be fine. That tidies up a little bit there. Okay, next is we are going to um, uh, sort out its UVs. So one issue you'll see when you start doing sculpting things and all this stuff is that you'll see the, the grid pattern that you have as default. It's a little stretched and deformed in all these sort of weird and wonderful ways, uh, which is obviously not good. Um, so what we're going to do is we go down to UVs and click on Auto UV. And what you're looking here is you're looking for the squares. Are the squares square? Okay, you're just trying to stop it from being too stretched out. The seams we're not too worried about because in a natural formation like a cave, See, the seams are very easy enough to hide um, just just through nature. So, yeah, we're happy with that. That's not too bad. Uh, we click accept. And we're good to go. Right, so now we've got the textures sort of laid out on this one. But what you're going to notice is if I put a texture on this, so if I go to the starter content and add uh, my basalt material on it, you're going to get all like blurry. That's because we've got a big object with a small texture. 
So you want to go to your UV editor and you're going to see the UV map for the cave. Okay, you select all of this, go to the move tool up top here, and then go to the little uh, blue uh, like corner, click that and drag it out and make it nice and big. And that should do, hit apply, close. And because we're overlapping it, you can see now the material has now looked more normal. Yeah, it looks probably better. Okay. Uh, you could probably do try a planar mapping if you want to as well. But as I say, with more natural elements like a cave, it's not a big deal because cave seems, you're, it seems exist naturally in caves anyway. So it's not a massive problem. You're not going to notice them too much in here. So yeah, you can do either. There's no, no, no big difference. Oh, uh, if I push play, it would be nice if I actually started on the ground. Okay, so let's take a look around and uh, see what our cave is looking like. Yeah, not too bad. Okay, we obviously we're clipping for the landscape here, but we can fix that. That's not a problem. Because um, what we're going to do is we're going to eventually put this inside of a mountain uh, and can then connect it up to the um, landscape. Okay, that's not looking too bad. Okay. Now, caves on their own aren't going to be enough. You're probably going to have to put in some other static meshes in there to put some uh, extra details on there. Um, and we will be mesh, mesh painting it, yes, Mr. Mistrada. Um, because I'm going to show you some interesting things you can do with that. But, um, yeah, so this is just like the starting point of the cave. You would start off like that. And, it's, and what's really nice about it is you can always go back to modeling mode and edit it a little bit too, if you want. So let's go ahead and um, mesh paint. So with mesh painting, there's a couple of things you want to do level design wise and also just aesthetically as well. So let me go back to selection mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my basalt material. Basalt? Basalt? How do you say it? I'll say, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, and we're going to use vertex painting to change this material. Okay. So I'm going to do vertex color as an input node. And we're going to use the red channel for this. I'm going to lerp it. And you want the red channel to go into the alpha. Okay, that's going to be our controller. Now, by default, every vertex is white, which means it's uh, one in every channel. So we want the existing base color to go into uh, B. And then bring that down to base color. So it should look the same. Okay. <clears throat> but A, what we're going to do is going to de recolor this a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to take this multiply value and I'm multiply it again by a little recolor. Uh, we're going to go in here and we'll make it a bit more sandy. Um, we'll just make it a bit more like worn. Like that, that'll do. And then put that into the lerp. And hit apply. Uh, so uh, this video will be online to everyone um, later on uh in a couple of weeks time uh yeah the lighting will fix as well don't worry we'll fix the lighting i'll show you how to fix that um so uh, i'm just keeping it on because it's easier to show this next bit um so what we're going to do is going to change this now to uh the mesh paint mode and then go to paint now as i said every vertex by default is white so if i were to change the color view mode here to rgb channels it's, it's all white um I'm going to turn that off, and what we're going to do is we're going to go to the uh, erase color, which is zero, black. It means if I start erasing stuff, it's going to change the color of it. So if I hold to erase, you hold down shift, and now I can paint the floor a different color. Now, what's really vital about this is when you're designing games and designing cave levels, you kind of want the floor to be a different color from the walls and ceiling. This makes it obvious to the player what's traversable and what's not. Um, which can be quite vital if your caves are especially like sort of rounded looking. Um, but we can paint with that in. Okay. Oh, 
obviously it's a bit underneath here we can't really see because the landscape's in the way but we'll do it anyway i'm just moving my mouse cursor over it okay let's go around here obviously you can do a lot more complicated materials if you want you to um, for sake of time just changing color but you can do it make it look wet and things like that if you want by changing the specular and roughness settings Ooh. okay so just by doing that one addition the level will now make it a lot easier for the player to navigate and look around because they know exactly what's floor and what's not floor yeah you know, it's a bit more obvious what they're doing okay cool right let's fix the lighting so as, you, as some of you have noticed uh lighting is a bit weird and the reason why it's weird is because we've turned it the normals inside out we've inverted them uh just so we can see what the hell we're doing the normals mean that the light is allowing through the mesh so we're going to fix that by making the mesh two-sided the material sorry two-sided so we'll go back to our material and tick two-sided apply Okay, so now it's got an outside shell basically and we go inside of it and you can see it's now not doing anything weird well it's got some weirdness in it but for the most part it's okay okay and you obviously you still need to light your cave because you want to be able to see what the hell you're doing um but um not looking too bad okay so let's uh see what it's like without any lighting added to the cave because we i think we have still got auto exposure turned on so yeah uh, this is ue5 so yeah dark as hell can't see much okay so let's fix that up a little bit so one thing you can do is you can use a post process volume to increase the exposure inside the thing or we can just drag some lighting in now chances are you're probably going to want to drag some lighting in so some tips of how to do this is you're going to drag some lights and you drag a point light in for example and with a point light you first of all want to make sure the source radius is huge. You don't want any sharp shadows in here unless you've got an actual light source in the cave. Because what you're talking about here is like sort of ambient light that you're just going to see like because you want to see what's going on. So if we change the source radius, be massive, we'll get much, much softer shadows. Um, okay, and, uh, and to emphasize the sort of dark nature of it, I'm going to change the light color a little bit to more of a bluey sort of light here that's not looking too bad okay and we're again gonna move another light across and sort of just light our cave up a little bit i will probably also if i was doing this uh with an actual game is put a, a a dim light source on the player character on their camera so as you walk around the cave your character is going to have a little bit of a light on them in fact, actually, let's do that because it might be quite useful to actually just do. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go around and just whoop, put these sort of like just ambient lights in here. Uh, uh, this is with Lumen and Ray Tracing on. I haven't turned them off. Okay. Uh, do you have a question time planned for next week? I do. Um, so fingers crossed. Uh, be okay to go ahead. Okay, so let's take a look at how that looks now with those a few lights added to the scene here. And um, we've still got this weird lighting problem going through, but we can try and fix that in a moment. Um, okay, so not looking too bad. But as I said, I would usually put a little dim light source on the player character. So as you walk around, you're going to have a bit of a lighting uh, follow you around too. You see this in games like Dark Souls and Elder Ring, they'll do that quite a lot um, in those games because it's just easier just to stick a light on you. Okay, so let's go grab a light, point light. And we'll put it just above the character, maybe a little bit behind the camera like this. And again, we'll increase the source radius of this. We haven't got a, we're not holding a torch or anything like that. So we just want to increase the source radius so it's nice and big like this. Now, the intensity of this will probably be quite variable based upon what kind of style you're going for. So if I was to go back into my world here and just drag in my character, I'd recommend doing this and then watching the camera view. So I'm going to pin the camera view there and then just move this thing into the cave. 
and you can kind of see like obviously it's lighting up around our feet as it is here but it may be a bit much okay so on my other screen which i've got over here i'm going to adjust the intensity a little bit so i'm just going to adjust it while looking at this one and go to maybe let's try 200 and 250 okay now let's play test that and see what that's like oh, let me delete this one i don't want him there play from here so you'll notice it as you get close to walls the wall will light up yeah might need to make it a bit brighter let's go to 600 okay yeah that's not too bad you can see the floor beneath your feet as you go into really dark areas basically that's what you want but again it tends to what kind of style of game you're going for um if you're doing like a sort of uh, realistic game this might be enough but if you're doing more of a uh, a cartoony sort of cave you probably want to use those uh, stationary lights a little bit more or if you want to be extra fancy um you can just chuck in a, a little trick i do which is another directional light but change intensity down to like one and change the car shadows off and you're now going to light up all the insides of your cave nice and clearly so if you're doing like a more lit game um where you want the player to see exactly where they're going you can just put a fake directional light in yeah yeah it does the trick um what's the benefit of using the workflow sort of separate static meshes to build out the environment okay so the uh, and this also goes along with animator alex is asking what are the tangible advantages of creating these caves in unreal versus a 3d program if you know there's a certain look design aim to be created uh so there are a few benefits and we're going to see that in a minute with the landscaping tool but one of the big benefits rather than using static meshes for sculpting this sort of cave system out is that you can adjust it on the fly okay so you can uh, i can uh, if i don't like a certain thing i can just do it right here right now go into modeling mode go to deform set would help if I set the thing first go to vertex sculpt and just push out bits and you know whatever i want that's flattened that's the wrong one i was wondering what's going on uh sculpt there you go so i can increase or decrease whatever i want whenever however i want there's no reason why i can't um and if I break the UVs, I can just auto UV it again inside of Unreal without having to go into another software package to do it. So let's make this hole a little bit bigger. Could you even have the walls deforming in runtime? Uh, you probably could do some geometry scripting stuff, yeah. Um, but that's not the topic of today, so we're not going to go into that. Um, that's a whole other thing. But uh, you, you could, theoretically you could okay so i hit accept oh and wait for that to do its thing oh i think i accidentally moved it yep ah where'd it go mm, where'd it go uh oh um uh, brush strokes let's go back there right there somehow it got rotated i don't know why section mode there you go um but yeah okay um so we've got some pretty cool stuff going on here okay so let's show you how we can implement in uh, insert this into a landscape so let's go to my landscape mode and make a little mountain uh to hide our thing in so i'm just gonna go da, 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 da. do a basic cover and we'll refine it in a minute i'll show you some cool ways to refine it Do, 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 do. 
obviously you want to make sure it's all covered and make our little mountain okay so as i mentioned right at the start of the session you can't have landscapes that con like concave you can't make them go over uh, but you can make holes in them um, so to make a hole in this you have to edit the material for it so when you go to our landscape here and at the moment you can see if i go to landscape uh, you can see there's no landscape material in it so i need to make a material first of all so let's do a, a grassy one a really basic crappy basic one so we're going to go to our material and open it up and in here i'm just going to put in a little texture or grass and put that into the base color for uvs we're going to look for landscape layer coordinates you need this if you're doing landscape stuff you're then going to go and you probably have a landscape blend but i'm not going to worry about that now because we're not worried about that that's not today's topic uh, but we are going to make it use the transparency of the landscape. So if you search in here for landscape visibility mask, this is what you want to plug into your opacity mask. Okay. And then you want to make the material masked. Hit apply. Um, let's get rid of the shine. I hate the shine on the grass texture on here. So I'm going to change the speculator to zero. And also going to put the normal map in as well. Just so it looks a little bit nicer. Because I like looking at nice things. Okay. There's our rudimentary basic material for our landscape. So we're going to set that. And then in a landscape, I'm going to select it here. And wait for it to kick in. Done. Right. Now I've got to make a hole. So we've got to find, first of all, where the cave entrance is. There it is. Okay. So here. And what I'm going to do is go to landscape mode. Go to sculpt. And you're going to change the visibility. And obviously change the brush size to whatever you want. I, I usually start it off quite small. Because um, we're going to want to paint um, only a few vertices out. But as you can see here, you can sculpt out the vertices. Now you want to get out roughly the right size. Not too fast on specifics just yet. Just the rough size. Now, one thing to note is that if you're doing this method with landscapes and caves, it's going to be very difficult to line up the holes exactly. So this is why you see in a lot of games, they'll cover the, the edges of the cave up with other meshes, which we'll be doing as well. Um, but you'll, you'll typically see that in a game. If the landscape is a seamless transition into a cave, chances are the landscape is a static mesh rather than a height mapped actor. But also, we've got a bit of a gap here. What can we do? Well... The beauty of it being in modeling mode in Unreal is I can go to deform, not deform, sorry, uh, model, polygroup edit, and I'm just going to turn off all my options for my selection filter so I can set just the vertices. Click on this, and I'm going to move this into the right position, roughly. As I say, it's not going to be exact just because of the nature of these two systems working together. But I can get pretty close. Ooh. And you can always add more detail to it if you want it to really close up the gap as close as possible. Uh, we'll just do that. And we'll just move that along. Sadly, I, at least I haven't seen it. There is no like vertex snapping tools. You still use the grid um, and the snap tools there, but there's I can't see any way to snap like the vertice of this or the vertice of the landscape. At least I haven't seen it yet. It could be there. I don't know, but I haven't. I can't say I've seen it. I'm going to change this from. No, it doesn't really make a difference. Um, okay, so I'm going to go there. Open this up. And we want this one. Okay. OK. 
get as close as we can. And I think that's as good as we're going to get it. Um, yeah, accept. Okay, so we can clean this up by clearing out more of the visibility mask of the thing. Uh, visibility mask, we'll clean up a bit there. That little bit there. If you want to undo it, it's shift. You can paint bits back in if you want to. But you're not going to get exact, as I said. So you're going to get a rough estimate of where you want the hole to be. Okay. But it should allow you to go through it and into your cave. Yeah. And anything that you stretched or broke when moving things about, like this thing, uh, we can auto UV them back into shape in a second. So it's not a big deal. But as I said, most games you're going to find when you do see a landscape height map being used is the transition between stack mesh to landscape is going to be very rough. So you usually want to cover it with some sort of mesh of some description. Um, so we can make our own meshes for this. Uh, we can also use the default ones that come in with the pack. Uh, if you want to start a content, we can use it in here. Um, whatever you like, you can yeah, do whatever you like in here. So we might as well just use this as we're here. Um, actually, I'll tell you what, we'll actually, we'll, we'll go modeling mode. As we're doing modeling mode, let's have some more fun with modeling mode. Uh, so we could do a Taurus. We could, yeah, that could be quite fun to do a Taurus. Uh, yeah. We're going to increase the that there, major radius, go like that, increase that a little bit, and going to rotate that around. Sure, why not? Uh, that'll do. Okay, and then we're going to deform it. So we're going to deform, vertex sculpt. And we can now push and pull, pull this thing around. So sculpt. Uh, we're going to move, I think, instead. So let's see. We've got a move we can use. Uh, there, there you go. And let's increase the size somewhat. Ah. There we go. Oh, it's mirroring. Hold on. Uh, symmetry off. We don't want symmetry. We, we're doing natural shapes. Screw symmetry. Um, so I'm just going to get a rough shape that I want it to be in. I don't really care for like detail at the moment. I think I'll fix it all up in a second. I should really make this a bit bigger. Okay. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Okay. And let's do smooth fill. Okay, and now I'm going to pull some of this in. So I'm going to take this and stretch it out like that. Not looking too bad. Uh, so once again, you can auto UV this as well. Um, let's sculpt this back in a bit. In. Yeah, let me move it then. Oh, I'm smooth, that's why. Move. Let's actually change it to sculpt and then I'm gonna push it back. I'm just going to blend it in with this space here. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So we've got a little mouth of a cave here. We accept. I'm going to go down to UVs, auto UV. Yeah, sure. That'll, that'll do. It'd be, it's nice doing natural stuff because you can get away with a lot when it comes to UV mapping, uh, which makes things a little bit nicer. So I'm going to put in my basalt in here. 
basalt, basalt, however you pronounce it. Uh, materials and drag it on top of that. And now, once again, it will look blurry, and there's a few things we're going to fix here. But first of all, let's fix the blurriness of this. So go to UV Editor, you're going to select all your thing, and you're going to go to Move, and you scale it up We're using the blue corner piece. And hit Apply. And now we're going to get a much more detailed looking texture coming out. Not looking too bad. Okay. So the next thing we'll do then is just covering it up with more rocks. Um, so we'll use our rock props. Uh, ooh, that's not that. Start content props, rock props, and we'll just scale. The, ooh, but I actually use the right scaler. Scale it up there. And try and match it a little bit. Always use nanite as well if you wanted for this. Oh, didn't do that. Okay. Cave. And don't forget, you can also put those assets inside of the shape here to as well to like help disguise the sort of connectivity of it do i strictly use mouse and keyboard yeah pretty much not strictly, just because I only have mouse and keyboard here. Okay, so let's see what it's like in game. Um, and then we'll add more to our cave. Okay, so uh, here we are. Can actually even get to, into the cave. No, that would be useful, wouldn't it? Um, so let's just go into our uh, entrance here. I'm going to go to deform. Vertex sculpt. And I'm going to sculpt at the bottom a little bit. Get more of a ramp in there. And push this down. With the control. Ah. Except, right, let's try that out. There we go. <laughs> and now I'm in the cave. Okay, and we've got a cave now connected to our landscape pretty well. Okay. And I said I've put a directional light in there to do lighting off the scenery. Um we can take that out now. We don't need we're not gonna use that. We're gonna use make it more re a realistic lighting scenario. Um let's move this out a bit here. Uh we're gonna do a deform, fat sculpt. Uh flatten actually. Um Ah, no, that's not right. Ah, oh, no, there you go. You can keep messing about with it all day if you want. Um, but, yeah, so generally speaking, that is a way of doing a cave. There are many ways of doing a cave. This is an easy way of doing it inside of Unreal, directly using the modeling tools to help you do it. So there are other things you can do to also decorate your cave. Um, so once you get to the point where you're ready to go and start decorating the inside of your cave with assets and level design things and, and so on, work in unlit mode makes life a lot easier. Okay. And now you can start putting in different uh, things. So let's say we actually want to put in some like actual assets that we actually want to use for some sort of environment. Um, so let's go to our level prototyping tools and start blocking out our level design inside of here. 
So we could do things like, okay, well, we want to have some sort of like lip here that I want the player to have to jump down. Okay, so I'm just going to do this sort of thing. And get that to the right sort of height and angle. Okay. So I've got this little bit that I want the player to be able to jump down, for example. But once you get into that position, you're happy to like, yeah, I want to make that natural thing. Uh, again, you can take this into modeling mode and just rough it up a little bit. So go to modeling mode. With it selected, we can now deform it and whatever else you want to do. So I'm going to edit sculpt here. And it might be better actually to dynamic sculpt this because it's going to have not many vertices. Yeah, once we get enough dyna dynamic stuff in there, we can push and pull it out. Maybe increase the height of this lip here. Yeah, accept. And again, we can UV using UV tool um, and, and things like that. Yeah, so we can go to UV, auto UV. Auto UV is actually pretty good in this. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite impressed with the auto UV tools in here. Um, but I'm just I'm just clicking it and going. Uh, but you can obviously tweak it and adjust it as much as you like too as well. Um, yeah, it's uh, pretty neat. So you can change the number of patches if you want. And I'll bring it down. So I'll say like 10. And it's like it's gonna do like more interesting sort of cuts because it can't do too many. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can really mess about with this. Um and get some interesting results. So set that. And we can put that on with our ah. If if you do this though, be aware if you try to model an existing model, it does affect the original model. So you probably want to duplicate the mesh first before you do this. Um that was my my mistake. Um but let's just go in and chuck a mesh on it, a material on it, sorry. Do, 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 do. Yeah. And again, we can probably uh, upscale the UV editor uh, on that one as well. UVs, editor UV, select all that and scale up. Oh, this one, scale that up. Apply. We've got a lot of data here that we don't need. We can simplify the model probably a little bit. So I'm going to go to default, no, model, and uh, no, mesh. Simplify. There we go. And still can be as simpler than that. So we can go change percentage down to like maybe 25 percent, 10 percent. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe you want to do like a mine shaft type thing. Um, in which case we can just bring in. Some wooden beams and just put in wood. Uh, I've only got shiny wood, so that's not good, is it? Uh, rust, Sh sure, <laughs> for lack of a choice, I'm running out of time, so I don't want to spend too long on it. Um, yeah, then. Yeah. Obviously, you populate with whatever meshes you want. Minecarts, uh, torches, bad guys. Um, and that should be all good. Yeah. There's our little beam, and there's our lip. We can drop down. So 
So yeah, modeling mode is really powerful if you want to start building out more natural environments like caves and things like that. Um, and it should still work with the uh, nav mesh too. So if you bring in a nav mesh and scale it up, obviously. P, it'll still generate a nav mesh inside of it. Um, so yeah. Um, you just put that in. Obviously, it's at this point where you might have to like tidy up some of the connections so the nav mesh can generate properly. Um, but once you've done that, then yeah, you're good to go. If we put some water in there, you can put some water planes in it. So uh, if you know what water plane is, um, it is when you put in a plane like this. And we'll do like that, for example. And then we'll put some water on it. And we'll just scale it up like that. And then if we play it. I might have to, um, yeah, I might have to scale up the UVs. Uh, so again, go body mode. UVs, you better tell. Yep. We'll just back it away up. That'll do. And it should look okay. The default. I hope that doesn't have that walking on it. Let's just give it the actual oh, hold on. on the lake one. Let's give the ocean one. Tends to look a bit better. Uh, probably have to scale up a little bit more on the UV side of things. Apply. Close. A bit difficult when it's got like. Uh, darkness. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go to physics, turn off collision on this thing. Uh, collision presets, no collision. Oh, yeah. Uh, does this mean I can make meshes in UE5 like in Blender? You can, yeah. The tools are good, but not probably not as versatile as the ones that are in Blender, but there are some good ones in there. Uh, so the benefit you, you can have with the editing models inside of Unreal directly is you can have quite a bit of fun with making it exactly how you need it to be. And it's a lot, the workflow is a lot easier too because you can just go straight in like I have been and just mess about with it. Um, yeah, like this cave, I could probably whack up the, um, uh, the uh, texture. UVs on that a bit more. Uh, do, 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 do. And this one, uh, UVs. Too much, I think. <laughs> Too much. Maybe I should go down, not up. That's what the problem is. Uh, UV detail. You can always snap it as well, using the snaps. Oh, but I don't want to use snaps in this case, because I actually want to get smaller. It's easy if you can see both at the same time. Too much. Uh, hold on. Yeah, 
Det är en... Uh... Oh, gosh. Uh, let's just auto UV again. Do this again. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, and that's basically it for today. Um, so let's recap what we've covered today. So today we have gone through and explained how caves can be made using modeling tools, starting off with the cube grid tool and then deforming it in every single kind of way possible to create exactly what we want to use. And then we talked about how we made our landscape use a visibility mask to be able to stitch the two together. Um, but let's talk about and explain a, a few reasons why you, uh, uh, not reasons why, but a few reasons how you could use this going forward as well. Um, so you could make multiple cave sections in model form and then just stitch them together afterwards because you can bridge gaps together too. So you can stitch them all up and combine them and make them union. Uh, that's totally possible too. So you can do that. Um, but as you can see, it's very simple and quick to actually just make something. So it's not too bad just to go from scratch every single time if you wanted to. But let's say you've got a nice shape that you want to use over and over again. You can just save it out because every model you make in your game is available in your maps folder. So next to your map, uh, in first person, map, you've got generated folder, and in there you'll find your options. So let's say I really like that cave, I'm gonna put it somewhere else as well. I can just drag it out again, and there's my cave. Yeah. And I'm gonna connect the two caves up, I can just duplicate it and put it in, and connect them up. Yeah, those sort of things. So definitely have a play about modding mode. Modding mode is really powerful and can let you do really interesting things such as making caves. Uh, if you like this video and well, video, this live stream, <laughs> and you want to see more live streams from me, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. And if you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com uh, forward slash Ryan Lady. Uh, this video archive is going to go up on Patreon straight away. So you can start playing around and watching what we're watching it back um but hopefully you've learned something from this and got inspired and want to try out new things um if we're back again hopefully on wednesday for another question time and then we return next saturday to retro remake where we started last time making uh monkey island uh, not monkey island, day of the tentacle uh remake and we're going to continue working on our adventure game there so thank you so much everyone make sure you uh, subscribe and um enjoy the rest of your weekend see you everyone bye